I, I guess we can move on now to the yes. Lieutenant Governor's position. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Ladies first. What's her name? Her name? Tell us your name. I hope this doesn't fall through. Uh, uh, maybe we can, okay, very good. My fellow deplorables. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready to win again? Yes. Because I'm tired of losing. The Democrats are eating our lunch. And when we bring lunch money, they're taking that too. And it's time for it to stop. And I am the one that's going to get us across the finish line. I'm running for a lieutenant governor. My name is Winsome Sears. I've done it before. This is not my first rodeo. I can do it again. I have been looking at the numbers, folks. And we can't seem to make it. Daniel Gade, wonderful man. You would think he would be a hero. Not at all. They trashed him. He got 43.4% of the vote. Donald Trump got 44.9% of the vote. Folks, we got to cross the finish line. You know what that tells us? We're hitting a wall. We're hitting a wall. And all of the candidates that we get to 44, we get to 47, we can't, we, get to 40, we, we can't get past 50. You can't win if we don't get past 50. Listen, if we do what we've always done, we're gonna get what we've always got. The only way to move past that is to bring in new voters. The only way to do that, we have to expand the base. I have been doing that. I had a pact. Black America is to reelect the president. When the president decided what the 10 battleground states were, we went. I was down in Louisiana. I'm gonna tell you how difficult it's gonna be for some of the others lieutenant, uh, as lieutenant governor to get through. Down in Louisiana trying to raise money for this PAC so we could print our booklets, put them in the black community, talk about all that conservatives have done for us. And then to raise money so that we could go on the air in on black radio, because you gotta know where the votes are. Yeah. If the fish ain't over there, why are you going over there? You know what I'm saying? It's common sense. So what do we do? I'm there, I'm listening to the Uber driver had the radio tune in Louisiana to a black radio station. And Governor Bell Edwards at the time was running for re-election, Democrat. Folks, this is what he said. The Republicans are gonna bomb your churches. What, what, what? What century are we in? <laughs> this is the kind of rhetoric that's there. But here's the thing. There was no Republican response. Nothing to dispel that, nothing to disabuse us that that's not what's going to happen. But time out, time out. It wasn't Republicans that bombed black churches. It was Democrats. But we never said that. We weren't there to say that. You leave a vacuum, somebody's gonna fill it. So I'm saying to you, we have got to expand the base. We did it. Here's one thing that we did to prove to you it can be done here in Virginia. We were down in Florida. We bought all four Haitian radio stations. We flooded the airways. We got the script, got the Creole, to be, for it to be in Creole, day and night. Let me tell you what happened. President Trump won 23 of the 25 Haitian leaning precincts. I'm your girl. I can do this. I can do this. I did it when I ran for House of Delegates right here. I, I, I represented Chesapeake, parts of Chesapeake, Norfolk, and Virginia Beach. That had not been done that a Republican represented a majority black district since 1865. Wow. I'm not telling you something I can't do. I'm a Marine, I know how to fight. And let me tell you something, we lose 100% of the battles we walk away from. We can't walk away anymore. Now, you can like people, you can like my fellow, you know, gubernatorial nominees or candidates. But listen, this is not the Miss Universe pageant. 
This is for governance of our commonwealth. We can still like them, but who is going to get us across the finish line? Who's going to win? Better yet, who do you think the Democrats do not want to see on the debate stage next to them? Ding, ding, that would be me. That would be me. Because I'm checking all the boxes, and you know they like gender, uh, identity, uh, all these other things. That's, they're into that. So here we go. I'm an immigrant. My father came to America August 11th of 1963. That date is significant. Why? Because just 17 days later, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. I said to him, why would you come when things were so bad for us? He said, because this is where the jobs were. I said, but it was the height of the civil rights movement. Why would you come? He said, because this is where the opportunities were. He came with $1.75, folks, you can't get any poorer than that. He put himself through school. He became a landlord, bought real estate. And now he's comfortably retired in Georgia. I tell him, it's, the house is too big for you. He says, leave me alone, it's my money. <laughs> Plus, he's got guns. <laughs> So, you know, what they do is they try to shut us up. They say, you're racist, you're homophobic, you're a bigot, you're this, you kill little, little kids, you do this, you do that. You even hate animals. So, I say, after you get past all that, let's talk about policy. Let's talk about trade. Let's talk about business. Listen, folks, I have a small business, and I'm having a hard time. I have lost 25% because our governor is a hypocrite. He kept open the ABC stores. Why? So we could drown ourselves in our sorrows that we're losing everything. But let's follow the money. $500 million is what kept the ABC stores open. It's a cash cow for us. But he closed mom and pop stores. And people have lost their livelihood, lost everything. And then folks can't pay their rent. You can't evict anybody. How are we supposed to? Oh, we get some government checks for $600. We, we, we get another for, I guess, $1,400. And by the way, where's this money coming from? You know we're in a deficit. These people have never run a business in their lives. They're using our money to be kind to other people. How about you don't give us the fish? How about you let us go catch the fish? Because that's what we are about as conservatives, are we not? Yeah. We don't want you to, because here's the thing, and here's how I became a Republican. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> want to hear it, hear it? No. As, uh, George Dukakis, and I'm dating myself, came on with his commercial. I had just uh, had my last child, she was three months old, and he said, we're gonna expand abortion, we're gonna blah, 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 blah. And I thought, I don't think I believe that. Yeah. And then he said, and I'm gonna expand welfare, blah, 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 blah. I thought, oh my goodness. And then Bush, the father, came on, and he said something that really rocked my world, he said, if all you ever have is welfare, you will never have anything to pass on to your children. I said, oh my God, I'm a Republican. <laughs> you see? But it has to be, why? Because people are dying to get to America. They say that we're so racist, we're bigots, and we hate people. Well, if that's the case, all those Haitians that they stopped at the border, the southern border, why are they trying to, they're, they're black folks, why are they trying to get into a racist country? I don't get it. The Indian folks who are at the border, the folks that are coming up from Guatemala and everywhere else, why would they come here if we're so racist? I mean, can we put two and two together and realize the Democrats are playing with us? And we're done. We are done, we are done. I am for election reform. 
I'm going to tell you this, and you probably don't even know it because you see, I'm telling you, sometimes Republicans are just downright silly. We're stupid. Uh -huh. We get something handed to us on a plate, and we never run with it. Here's what we should be running with. I am now living in Winchester, Frederick County. Do you know that on January 13th of this year, the presiding circuit court judge of the Frederick County District, Judge Etheridge, William Etheridge IV, entered a consent decree against the Virginia Electoral Board. Here's what it said. Here's what it said. Poll ballots that were not postmarked were counted after election day here in Virginia. So when you hear that stuff didn't happen, it did. Oh. We have that on record now. I'm not saying it would have changed anything. I'm saying the judge found that it happened. Polls, uh, ballots came in, no postmark. After election day, they were mingled with everything else and counted. Number two, by law, the Virginia Electoral Board is supposed to clean up the voter rolls. You've heard that from your senator. You've heard that from one of our gubernatorial candidates. It didn't happen. And you know, the Democrats, their dead people always vote. <laughs> Our dead people can't ever vote. <laughs> I'm trying to get, you know, what's, what's on the other side, we gotta call them back. They don't vote. <laughs> they like it where they are, they don't vote. <laughs> if we could get our dead folks to vote, it'd be wonderful, but they don't. So we need to clean up the voter rolls. The law says that it was not followed. And, and here's the kicker. It's just like when you were a child. And if mom said, be home by the time the street lights come on, and you aren't there, you know what you were going to get. <laughs> In Virginia, there is no consequence, there is no penalty if the voter rolls aren't cleaned up. It just says, clean them up. Well, I've been there, I know how to do it. Okay. You got to put a penalty on this stuff. Amen. And the fact is, somebody has to lose their job if it's not done. Amen. Something has to happen. Maybe we need to find them for doing their jobs. What a concept. <laughs> I could keep going on, but I'm telling you, ballot box integrity, if you don't have that, you don't have a democracy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. What is the yeah. point of voting? Yeah. I swear, I remember, this is feel like deja vu, when Robert invited me when I was first elected, and I said to myself, you know, I've said this before, I have said we need integrity at the ballot box. The other thing we need, you all here, they want to take our guns. Folks, in Winchester, everybody has a gun. That's just how we roll up there. I have a small business, I, I, you know, and sometimes they, they, the folks let us in, into you know, their houses when I, one, one, one customer called and said, are they okay, you know, I have a gun. I said, sir. This is Winchester, we all have guns. <laughs> we all have guns, we're good. And we're not afraid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> parental school choice, people. Parental school choice. Yes. Education, yes. freedom. Yeah. Something else I'm gonna put in. Why? It's just common sense. Here's the thing. When I got financial aid to go to college, what happened? The government ensured that the schools were accredited, licensed, the professors were accredited, yes, and then go where I want. They didn't tell me that school you must go to and that school only. How is it then, as a parent, I don't have that same opportunity to educate my child where I want that child to go, with the values I want instilled in that child? You're telling me the tax money I work hard for, I have to give it to that building that building. So the building is more important than my parental rights to educate my child. I don't think so. Listen, we have been told, the canary in the mine, for a long time, was telling us, Republicans, conservatives, you're in trouble. You're not winning statewide races. You're not winning statewide races. You're not, and we didn't listen. Why? Because we said to ourselves, at least we have the House and the Senate. Did we not? We, we, you know, we placated ourselves with that. We soothed our wounds with that. Well, folks, we ain't got the House, no Senate. 
not the governorship, not the lieutenant governorship. They have cleaned our clocks. <laughs> and it's time to say, thus far and no more. So, I'm your girl. I can get us across. Small businesswoman, because Democrats are checking boxes. Small businesswoman. I'm black. Yay. I'm female. Yay. I'm an immigrant. Yay. I'm their worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to meet me. And a veteran. And a veteran. Thank you. Yeah. Louise Moore. All the way. And by the way, I mean, folks, we, we have to start answering their 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 their, their uh, broadsides. We do. Yep. And it's very common sense. One of them said. Well, I get this a lot, actually. One of the things, how could you support a man like Trump? How could you support? He said, blah, 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 you know, the P word. I'm a Marine. In the Marine Corps, women make up 5% of the population. And then of that population, my MOS, I was a diesel mechanic and a German electrician. So. I was around a lot of men all the time. Okay. I would be the only woman, yep. and I was one of the fellas, and I could cuss just like them. I don't do that anymore, but I could. And I heard everything you could ever hear men talk about. Don't phase me. Here's what I want to know. What is your policy on this, this, and this? Because the president lowered corporate taxes so they could bring them from overseas so that our economy could roar again. Obama did not do that. Did you see they want to take credit for that stuff? He made NATO pay their fair share. What a concept. So we should pay for your defense? Is that how this works? So your economy goes and, and da, 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 da. Well, let's talk about black folks. What did he do for us? I'll tell you what he did. Do you know the president forgave $360 million that they owed to the government? And you say, well, that's pandering. Well, if it's pandering, it should be done because it was Republicans that started those historically black colleges and universities when the Democrats kept us out. How about that? You see what I mean? We, we've got to answer salvo for salvo. We, we cut no corners with them. We don't let them take up the space. We must answer. And I could keep going, but I'm not. But you vote for me, we'll cross the finish line. Whatever your opponent, the Democrats don't want to see, right next to them, challenging them, that would be me for $500, Alex. That's me. It's winsome. Vote for me. Thank you very much. Any questions? Before you leave, as you know, we libertarians are rabid believers in the United States Constitution and our, and our Bill of Rights. Uh, this represents the Second Amendment. Yes, sir. This is a sticker from the Virginia Citizens Defense League. Okay, Would wonderful. you wear it? I, would I wear it? And, Listen. And after you put it on, can you get down and give us 20? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to say this, and some of y'all are going to hate me, but then I'll go. Listen. <laughs> The Navy folks like to say that, you know, Marines need, need them, you know, because we have to ride on their ships and all that. <laughs> For you Navy folks. But here's a reason why we need you to carry us on your ships. It's because we got tired of walking on water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Winston. Yeah. Very stirring. <laughs> Glenn Davis.